Here are five of the most controversial finds in American archaeology. Number one, the Sarudi Mastodon site. In 2017, researchers published an explosive claim. Humans were in North America 130,000 years ago, and in San Diego, California, of all places. This interpretation was immediately met with skepticism, as it is over 100,000 years older than the next oldest archaeological site in the USA. The authors claim that the bones of a mastodon unearthed during construction in the 1990s were broken for marrow extraction by some unknown member of the genus Homo. Near the broken bone fragments were several andesite cobbles, which are hypothesized to have been used as hammer stones to forcibly break the large bones apart. The authors identified impact marks on the rocks as evidence that they were used by people, which would make them the earliest artifacts ever found in North America. Thorium-230 dating of the mastodon bones places the site to about 130,000 years ago, which interestingly coincides with the last interglacial period when the world was relatively warm and the pathway between Asia and North America wasn't blocked by ice. Conceivably, the find could represent a population of hominins that entered North America in much the same way as later groups before things got cold again and ice sheets blocked the passage for another 100,000 years. Despite this fascinating idea, the Sarudi site is inconclusive at best. There is no smoking gun at the site like human bones or complex tools that could be only made by people. More recently, rebuttals have pointed out that the cobbles could have received their impact marks from natural processes, and construction activities at the site, like heavy dump trucks driving above the fossil before its discovery, may be what actually caused the bones to break. Additionally, although American archaeologists don't typically look for sites this old, paleontologists have found thousands of finds from this time period, but the Sarudi site is the only one that's been argued to have resulted from human activities. Unless more evidence comes to light, it's unlikely that humans were in North America this early. Which is too bad, because this is the closest we got to Encino Man becoming reality. Fresh nugs, squeeze in the juice. Ow! Ow! Buddy. Number two, the Calico Early Man site. A drama similar to the Cerruti site played out 50 years ago, only 150 miles away at the Calico Early Man site near Barstow, California. In the 1960s, none other than famed paleoanthropologist Louis Leakey excavated the side of an alluvial fan at the edge of an ancient lake and found many Paleolithic artifacts. The project dated the site to about 50,000 to 100,000 years ago, well before the Clovis period, which at that time was thought to be the oldest culture in the United States. However, the Calico site has since become a cautionary tale of geofacts. Geofact is an informal term for rocks that look like artifacts, but are really just rocks. One of the most soul-crushing parts of being an archaeologist is telling your loved ones that the cool triangular rock they found in their backyard is just a geofact. I'm sorry to all I've hurt with my cold-hearted opinions. In the 1970s, noted geoarchaeologist Vance Haynes convincingly argued that Calico's oldest artifacts were actually geofacts. For one, none of the specimens were obvious Paleolithic tools like Mysterian points or level wafflakes. Additionally, artifact determination in the site was subjective, with thousands of rocks identified as possible artifacts, but only a selection of the best were presented as the evidence for human activity. Haynes suggested that the most likely scenario was that the rocks found in the site came to resemble artifacts as they naturally banged into each other in flash floods before their deposition and fractured in the hot sun. There are millions of stones in the Calico area, chances are a few of them will naturally look like artifacts. These days, most archaeologists believe the Calico site isn't really a site at all. Number 3, Kennewick Man. In 1996, two spectators at a hydroplane race noticed a skeleton eroding out of the bank of the Columbia River in Kennewick, Washington. The body was initially thought to be an older Caucasoid man, possibly a settler from the historic period. However, when the skeleton was radiocarbon dated, Kennewick Man turned out to be 9,000 years old. Closer examination revealed a stone projectile point lodged in his pelvis. Could Kennewick Man represent some lost population that was biologically different from Native Americans? That's what some scientists at the time thought. However, local Native American tribes claimed the bones under NAGPRA, the Native American Grave Protection and Repatriation Act, and wanted to reinter the body according to their beliefs. 
a group of scientists sued the government to prevent Kennewick Man's repatriation, and after a protracted court battle, they won the suit because modern tribes could not scientifically prove a direct affiliation to the bones. The victorious scientist could now further study Kennewick Man and concluded that he physiologically most resembled Polynesians or the Ainu people of Japan. DNA evidence would really straighten this out, and a 2015 study in the journal Nature successfully sequenced Kennewick Man's DNA. The results showed that he was most genetically similar to modern Native American populations, including tribes in Washington that had been claiming he was Native American all along. This is a notorious case of archaeologists getting things wrong, and it shows that trying to assign race through skeletal material is at best challenging and at worst damaging and disrespectful to Native cultures. But this wouldn't be the last time that archaeologists claimed people arrived in America before Native Americans. Number 4. The Salutrian Hypothesis In the early 2000s, around the time Kennewick Man was in court, Several scholars published the idea that the first arrivals in North America were actually French people? According to this hypothesis, coastal Salutrian people living near what is now Western Europe traveled to North America across the Atlantic Ocean during the last glacial maximum on a 1,500 mile long bridge of sea ice. The main evidence for this idea is that Salutrian tools from Western Europe that date to about 22 to 17,000 years ago look like Clovis tools that emerged in America 13,000 years ago. Under this perspective, a European population arrived in the eastern United States, settling at sites like the Meadowcraft Rock Shelter in Pennsylvania and Cactus Hill in Virginia, and then traveled westward, developing Clovis technology in the process. There are a lot of issues with this idea, but perhaps most damning is that genetic sequencing of a Clovis burial published in 2014 shows closest affiliation with Native Americans and a connection to Siberia. Most archaeologists today do not believe that the earliest Americans were from France. Number 5. Polynesians in California? The Polynesian migrations across the Pacific reached some of the last unoccupied places on the planet, and possibly interacted with South American populations. But did they make it to North America? That's what some archaeologists believe, based on the unique tamal-sewn plank canoes made by the Chumash in Santa Barbara, California. Tamals were probably the most seaworthy watercraft ever constructed in pre-contact North America. They could be 30 feet long hold a dozen passengers or two tons of cargo, and they made routine voyages to the Channel Islands for commerce possible. They were made from planks of driftwood sewn together with fibers and pitched with asphaltum that seeps out of bluffs around the oil-rich coastline. It turns out that Polynesian ships also used a sewn plank method, leading some to speculate that Polynesian explorers made it all the way to California and either taught or inspired the Chumash to make the tamal. Additionally, the Chumash word tamal might be related to the Proto-Polynesian word, and I'm so sorry, here we go, tumuraao, which I'm certain I mispronounced and means tree trunk. I don't really hear the similarity, but my opinion isn't worth much. I got a C plus in linguistics. Finally, a type of bone fishhook that developed around the time of the tamal resembles a Polynesian fishhook. Most archaeologists think that this isn't enough evidence to prove that the tamal was inspired by Polynesians. For one, archaeological evidence suggests that the tamal was developed before Polynesians made it to Hawaii, the nearest Polynesian island to California. Additionally, it's a much simpler explanation that native Californians invented the tamal themselves. In fact, in all these cases, Occam's razor plays out. It's plausible that a hominin butchered a mastodon in San Diego 130,000 years ago, or that Polynesians made it to California and taught people how to make cool boats. But the more straightforward answer is that construction equipment broke bones near some cobbles, and that the Chumash developed their own technology. DNA evidence proved that the straightforward answer of ancient Native Americans being, well, Native American, was the case, as opposed to Europeans crossing a frozen Atlantic. And sometimes, rocks are just rocks. But since these sites are indeed controversial, feel free to disagree in the comments. Thanks for watching, and make sure to subscribe to Poopy Archaeology for more videos about the past.